The notorious story of King Charles and his controversial consort, Queen Camilla, continues to unfold in the public eye. Amidst the grandeur of the long-awaited coronation ceremony held at Westminster Abbey on May 6th, King Charles was solemnly crowned as the monarch of the United Kingdom, captivating the attention of 20 million Britons who tuned in to witness the historic event. Standing by his side, Queen Camilla was also bestowed with the crown, cementing her position as queen consort. However, amidst the whispers of palace intrigue, questions linger about the precariousness of Camilla's status, should tragedy befall King Charles I. Will she too suffer the loss of everything she holds dear? Join us to discover Camilla's future. As King Charles and Queen Camilla's reign progresses, their respective teams meticulously prepare for every conceivable scenario, understanding the intricate nature of royal succession. Despite King Charles inheriting the longevity genes evident in his family lineage, exemplified by his father, Prince Philip, who passed away at the remarkable age of 99 in 2021, and his mother, Queen Elizabeth, who lived to the age of 96 until her passing last September. The inevitability of his eventual demise necessitates thorough planning for the succession transition. In the event of King Charles's passing, the monarchy's dynamics would undergo a significant shift, prompting a seamless transition in line with established protocols. Prince William, the Duke of Cambridge, and second in line to the throne, would ascend immediately as the reigning monarch, taking on the solemn responsibilities and duties befitting his new role as the sovereign. With Prince William's ascension, Catherine, the Duchess of Cambridge, also known as Kate Middleton, would assume a pivotal position as the queen consort or simply queen, depending on the preferred terminology and the subsequent designation by the royal family and relevant authorities. As consort to the monarch, Kate Middleton would play an essential role in supporting and complementing the reigning king's duties, representing the crown alongside him in various ceremonial and official capacities. The transition in the line of succession underscores the enduring continuity of the monarchy, as well as the adaptability and resilience of the British royal institution in navigating the intricacies of governance and tradition. Through careful planning and adherence to established protocols, the monarchy ensures a smooth transfer of power, thereby upholding stability and continuity in the realm. In the wake of King Charles's passing, the ripple effect extends to Queen Camilla, whose royal title would undergo a subtle yet significant transformation. As reported by the Daily Mirror, her technical designation would be that of the Queen Dowager, a title with historical precedence in the annals of the British monarchy. The term Queen Dowager was notably first utilized by Queen Adelaide, consort to King William IV, who outlived her husband by 12 years following his demise in 1837. Queen Camilla's prospective transition into the role of Queen Dowager is marked by a sense of historical continuity, reflecting upon the traditions and precedents established by her predecessors. However, beyond the mere titular change, Queen Camilla would find herself at a juncture where she possesses the agency to shape her future, according to her desires and inclinations. In contemplating the next chapter of her life, Queen Camilla would likely have a range of options available to her, each tailored to her personal preferences and aspirations. Privately retiring to Ray Mill House, her serene countryside abode, could provide her with the solace and tranquility conducive to reflection and introspection. Alternatively, she may opt to continue her unwavering dedication to charitable endeavors, leveraging her platform to champion causes close to her heart. Throughout her tenure as a prominent figure within the royal family, Queen Camilla has demonstrated a steadfast commitment to various charitable initiatives, notably in the realms of health, literacy, the arts, and the support of survivors of rape and sexual assault. Her continued involvement in these vital causes would undoubtedly serve as a testament to her enduring passion for philanthropy and advocacy further solidifying her legacy beyond the confines of traditional royal duties. The legacy of Queen Elizabeth, 
the Queen Mother, serves as a poignant example of resilience, grace, and unwavering dedication to the monarchy, casting a long shadow over the annals of British royal history. Following the untimely passing of her husband, King George VI, in 1952, and the subsequent ascension of their eldest daughter, Elizabeth, to the throne, the Queen Mother made a deliberate choice to be known by a title that embodied her enduring connection to the monarchy, the Queen Mother. This decision to adopt the title of the Queen Mother not only symbolized her profound reverence for her late husband's legacy, but also positioned her as a unique pillar of strength and support for her daughter, Queen Elizabeth II, throughout the duration of her reign. Despite the weight of her loss, the Queen Mother approached her role with characteristic dignity and fortitude, providing invaluable guidance and companionship to her daughter in the face of myriad challenges and responsibilities. Throughout Queen Elizabeth II's reign, the Queen Mother remained a steadfast presence within the royal family, actively participating in a myriad of ceremonial and public engagements well into her late 90s. From the grandeur of trooping the color to the elegance of royal ascot, she graced these occasions with an aura of regal splendor, endearing herself to the British public and earning their enduring admiration and respect. The Queen Mother's indomitable spirit and boundless energy belied her advancing years, serving as a source of inspiration and admiration for generations to come. Her dedication to duty and her unwavering commitment to serving her country and her family exemplified the very essence of nobility and service. Upon her passing in 2002 at the remarkable age of 101, Queen Elizabeth II paid tribute to her beloved mother in a rare televised broadcast from Windsor Castle, expressing heartfelt sentiments about her infectious zest for living and her enduring impact on those fortunate enough to have known her. In a poignant and heartfelt speech, Queen Elizabeth II eloquently expressed her deep sense of gratitude and admiration for her beloved mother, Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother on the eve of her funeral. With a voice suffused with both sorrow and reverence, Her Majesty reflected upon the profound impact her mother's life had on those around her and on the broader fabric of British society. Over the years, I have met many people who have had to cope with family loss, sometimes in the most tragic of circumstances. So I count myself fortunate that my mother was blessed with a long and happy life, Queen Elizabeth tenderly remarked, acknowledging the immense privilege of having had her mother's presence and guidance throughout the years. She painted a vivid portrait of the Queen Mother, emphasizing her infectious zest for living that remained undiminished until the very end. This indomitable spirit, coupled with a deep-rooted faith that served as a constant source of strength, epitomized the essence of her mother's character and resilience. As Queen Elizabeth II addressed the assembled audience, she articulated a profound sense of gratitude for the times in which her mother lived, a century marked by both trials and triumphs, sorrows and joys. She spoke of the extraordinary progress witnessed by the nation and the Commonwealth, acknowledging the resilience, courage, and service exemplified by countless individuals throughout the decades. This is what my mother would have understood, Queen Elizabeth II asserted, her words tinged with a sense of conviction and affection. It was the warmth and affection of people everywhere that inspired her resolve, dedication, and enthusiasm for life. In these sentiments, she captured the essence of her mother's enduring legacy, a legacy defined not only by her royal status, but by her profound connection to the people she served with unwavering devotion and compassion. In a message released on the eve of her own accession day in February 2022, the Queen conveyed her heartfelt desire that when her son, Charles, ascends to the throne, his wife, Camilla, be recognized with the title of Queen Consort. The timing of the message, carefully chosen to coincide with this significant milestone in her reign, underscores the importance of Queen Elizabeth's sentiments regarding the future of the monarchy.
With characteristic foresight and wisdom, Her Majesty articulated her confidence in the enduring support of the British people for her son and his consort, emphasizing the continuity of loyalty and service that has defined her own reign. When, in the fullness of time, my son Charles becomes king, I know you will give him and his wife Camilla the same support that you have given me, Queen Elizabeth wrote, invoking a sense of unity and solidarity among the royal family and the nation at large. Her words resonate with a profound sense of trust in the collective bond between the monarchy and its subjects, affirming the enduring strength of the institution even in times of transition. Moreover, Queen Elizabeth's expressed wish for Camilla to be known as Queen Consort reflects a recognition of her invaluable contributions and unwavering dedication to the royal family and its duties. Throughout her years as Duchess of Cornwall, Camilla has earned admiration and respect for her commitment to charitable endeavors, her advocacy for important causes, and her unwavering support for her husband, Prince Charles. As Queen Consort, Camilla would assume a prominent role within the monarchy, embodying grace, dignity, and a deep sense of service to the nation. Her elevation to this esteemed position symbolizes not only her personal journey, but also the evolution of the monarchy itself, embracing change while remaining steadfast in its commitment to tradition and continuity. The evolution of Camilla's title within the British monarchy has been a subject of considerable intrigue and speculation over the years, marked by shifts in official announcements and subtle changes in styling. Since her marriage to then Prince Charles in 2005, questions regarding Camilla's future title have lingered, with initial indications suggesting she would be known as Princess Consort. However, Queen Elizabeth's pivotal endorsement of Camilla as Queen Consort in her message preceding her own accession day in February 2022 signified a decisive shift in the narrative, laying the groundwork for a historic moment in the monarchy's history. The crowning ceremony on May 6 marked a significant milestone in Camilla's journey within the royal family, as she was officially crowned alongside her husband, Prince Charles. This momentous occasion was accompanied by a notable update to Camilla's title as the term consort was dropped, underscoring her elevated status within the monarchy. Buckingham Palace's decision to refer to her as Queen Camilla in the intricate invitation for the crowning ceremony released in April served as a clear indication of the palace's intentions and signaled a departure from the previously mooted title of Queen Consort. The decision to bestow upon Camilla the title of Queen Camilla represents a culmination of years of careful consideration and reflects the evolving dynamics within the royal family. As she assumes her role as Queen Consort, Camilla brings with her a wealth of experience, wisdom, and dedication to duty, embodying the timeless values that define the monarchy. The anticipation surrounding Camilla's title transition from Duchess to Queen Consort and ultimately to Queen has been a topic of keen interest and speculation among royal watchers and the public alike. Initial expectations suggested that Camilla would assume the title of Queen Consort at the start of Prince Charles's reign, serving as a distinction from Queen Elizabeth II. It was widely perceived that the coronation ceremony would provide an opportune moment to formalize Camilla's queen title, marking a significant milestone in her royal journey. The decision to delay Camilla's official designation as queen until the coronation ceremony was rooted in a desire to honor the legacy and enduring presence of Queen Elizabethan within the monarchy. By initially adopting the title of Queen Consort, Camilla paid homage to her predecessor while preparing for the eventual transition to her own sovereign role. The coronation ceremony, held on May 6, served as a momentous occasion for Camilla as she ascended to the status of queen. With the regal splendor and pageantry befitting such an event, Camilla's coronation represented a culmination of years of dedication and service to the royal family. It marked the formal recognition of her elevated position within the monarchy, 
and affirmed her unwavering commitment to supporting her husband, Prince Charles, in his duties as king. The palace's official update of Camilla's biography page, to reflect her queen title on May 6th, was met with widespread anticipation and excitement. This symbolic gesture signaled the completion of Camilla's transition to queen and underscored the significance of the moment for the royal family and the nation as a whole. What happened when William died? In the event of Prince William's passing, the line of succession will then pass to his children, ensuring the continuation of the royal lineage. Prince George of Wales, as the eldest son of King William and Queen Catherine, will assume the mantle of kingship, carrying forward the legacy of his forebears with dignity and honor. Following Prince George, the line of succession will then extend to Princess Charlotte of Wales, and finally to Prince Louis of Wales, ensuring the continuity and stability of the monarchy for generations to come. In the event of Prince William's passing and his children remaining too young to fulfill their royal duties, a scenario fraught with complexity, the responsibility of overseeing the monarchy would fall to his younger brother, Prince Harry. Designated as regent, Prince Harry would temporarily assume the role of guardian and caretaker of the throne until the next heir in line, Prince George, reaches an age suitable for assuming the responsibilities of kingship. This provision, known as a regency, is enshrined within the legal framework of the UK Parliament, ensuring continuity and stability within the monarchy during periods of transition or incapacity. A regency scenario arises if a monarch succeeds to the throne before the age of 18, or in the event of permanent incapacitation due to infirmity of mind or body. In such circumstances, the regent assumes the duties and powers of the monarch, acting on their behalf until the heir presumptive is deemed fit to ascend to the throne. Prince Harry's potential role as regent underscores the inherent complexities of royal succession and the need for contingency planning to ensure the smooth functioning of the monarchy. As the younger brother of Prince William, Harry occupies a pivotal position within the line of succession, poised to assume a position of leadership and responsibility should the need arise. Following Prince Harry in the line of succession are his own children, Prince Archie and Princess Lilibet of Sussex. Although further removed from the direct line of succession, they nonetheless represent potential heirs to the throne in the event of unforeseen circumstances affecting their elder relatives. What do you think about Princess Camilla if King Charles dies first? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.